Hi there, it's Lisa again, and I'm here with my little silicone cups. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos or any of my other video training, but I get quite nervous on camera and I tend to look a little bit um, stiff. So I decided that since silicone cups make me feel so happy and I have so much fun when I'm using them that if I held them in my hand as a prop during my video, then maybe I would seem a little bit more like myself and a little bit more relaxed. So here I am with my silicone cups. Um, today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the really specific work that we can do with silicone cups. So this is the kind of stuff that is really difficult to achieve in your regular practice. And the first thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about today is abdominal cupping. So being as my first real love in this work in body work and East Asian medicine was shiatsu therapy. And we were taught to start every treatment by working on the abdomen and diagnosing and assessing the state of the abdomen. And then as I moved further into my treatment, I training, sorry, I got really uh, involved with the work of Kiko Matsumoto, a Japanese acupuncturist, and she is very much the same way. She says that the abdomen is one of the major assessment areas on the body. So in Chinese medicine, we talk about the pulse and the tongue. We do facial readings, and of course, we do a verbal assessment as well. So for Kiko, the condition of the abdomen is as important as any of those. So I was already working in that way that resonated really well with me. And I found through the years of my practice that treating the abdomen was not only a great assessment tool, but that it also helped in soothing the body, calming the body down before I started treatment. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about that. As we know, when we're performing massage and body work and even acupuncture, one of the greatest effects that's been proven scientifically is the effect on the autonomic nervous system. So we know through some of the studies that have been released that these treatments are helping to put the body into a deep state of rest and repair. And this is so important. Uh, for those of you who have kept up with some of the research, I'm a little bit of a fanatic about the autonomic nervous system. I really think that the stress response, the fight or flight response, is responsible for a lot of illness in the body. We keep hearing stress kills, stress kills, but we don't necessarily really, really deeply understand what that means. Um, I, those of you who don't know me probably don't know, but I had a very serious accident when I was seven years old and I lost 80% um, of my blood and you know I broke a couple major vertebrae in my back and they didn't think I was going to survive. I did. Um, but I, I survived with chronic pain and had lots of big stressors in my life. And, it, you know, a few years ago, I realized that I was always in fight or flight. I was always in that direct response. And so a lot of the decisions I made in my life, a lot of the work that I did in my life, I was doing out of that place of stress instead of that place of rest and repair and longevity. So I am, as I'm sure you are too, if you've ever had these situations in your own life, that you resonate the same thing with others. So I really, really latched on to this research on the autonomic nervous system. And I was reading some research on acupuncture and also massage on the autonomic nervous system. And I started to think a little bit about cupping. And it made me realize that when we're cupping the abdomen, right, and we're drawing the blood and the tissues to the center of the body, we're essentially training the body to bring the blood back to the organs. And when we're in fight or flight, one of the responses that happens is that you know, our head and our limbs and our hearts get all 
of, or not all, but the blood rushes to the head and the limb and the heart so that we can respond very quickly in an emergency situation. And it's very important in those emergency situations for that to happen. But unfortunately, most people are spending about 80% of their lives in this fight or flight response, in this stress response. So only 20% of their lives in rest or repair. A healthy body should be spending 80% of their life in rest or repair and 20% of their life in fight or flight. So what about that 60% in between? That 60% in between is when our bodies are in a stress response, which should be in relaxation, which means one of the things that are happening during that 60% of the time is that our inner organs are not being properly nourished because of this autonomic nervous response. So I got very interested in this and the impact on that this would have on cupping therapy. And I am doing regular work on it. In fact, one of my master classes is specifically on abdominal treatment. So I talk about abdominal scarring, I talk about uh, menstrual issues, I talk about fertility issues, I talk about digestive issues, all kinds of constipation, diarrhea, sluggish liver, um, diaphragm, contracture, so tightness in the ribs. These are all conditions that can be um, really, really effectively treated with cupping with silicone cups with a proper depth of application. We have to be really careful cupping the abdomen. So don't just go throw some deep cups on the abdomen because the tummy is not well protected. So we really need to understand what we're doing there before we just slap cups on. So follow some of the training and you will see how we can have a huge impact. I've had clients with endometriosis who have had complete resolution in one or two sessions and then on a maintenance plan, they're having no symptoms whatsoever for their endometriosis. It's fantastic. If any of you have suffered from endometriosis, you know how much pain and discomfort and difficulty it brings to your life along with all of the emotional side of it, the headaches, the backache, everything that goes along with it. So this is one of the ways that silicone cups stand out as a very unique tool. Uh, facial cupping. Some of you may have seen or done my facial cupping masterclass. Facial cupping is an incredible tool. Again, really, really difficult to do with glass cups. With plastic cups, yeah, you can, but again, you don't get the same feedback with the cups as you do with silicone cups. So there are lots and lots of treatments that we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about with silicone cups that are fantastic, that are gonna save your hands, that are gonna get you into a depth of effectiveness in your treatments that you may not have reached before. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to bring this into your practice, how to get your clients understanding that it's not all about cupping marks. Not every treatment should require cupping marks. Sometimes we wanna put cups on the body on many different levels. So we're gonna talk about those different levels, those different depths of cupping, and we're gonna talk to you about how to teach your clients to understand cupping in a little bit different way as well. So they're no longer afraid of the modality. Because that's what I find. A lot of people come in and they say, oh, I had that done to me once. And just by their reaction, you know they didn't have a good experience. So we wanna change that experience of cupping therapy into something that's very pleasant, very comfortable, very relaxing treatment. And we're gonna talk a little bit, a bit more about 2020 and what this year is going to mean for cupping therapy. It's gonna be a big year for cupping. So that is my little chat for today, but stay tuned. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you a video just after this. So we're gonna look at some of the other cool things that you can do with cupping therapy, silicone cups. It's all covered in my online class. A couple little tips and I hope that you're having a beautiful day today. This feels really good. So and as I move the cups, and you may want to just start with one so that you're really tuning in to 
messages that you're getting there and then you can eventually you know apply some of these techniques I because I feel on this side it's a lot different than what she's doing on the other side yeah so when you first start out you'll be like is it that the suction on my cups is different from one side to the other mm. or is it actually what's underneath right and, it and it's good to ask yourself that question at the beginning I've done this a few times so I know that it's it's her it's not me <laughs> <laughs> So even just looking at the leg, we can see all the capillaries, right? Lots of circulatory congestion. Here. So did you just adjust to go a little slightly deeper? Slightly deeper, yeah. And that's because the superficial felt better? Felt okay. okay. It was, I could feel there was something deeper. Yeah. Yeah. So, how far down do you think you're getting? The depth? Yeah. Um. Like I think I'm getting into the muscle layer. Mm. Right? Like some people you can feel it's in the superficial fascia layer. Mm -hmm. And in her case, I don't really feel that. I feel like it's into the muscle layer. If that answers your question. I can already feel where some of the adhesion is. So I'm actually gonna start a little bit further down the diaphragm and start working up toward, and then peripherally, I got some. So interesting, here is very soft along here, mm -hmm. but out here. Once you get closer to like, diaphragm again, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so before I even go there, I'm going to work on this. Okay. That makes sense. So we talk about scar treatment, we think about scar, but really, you know, we have to get the whole... And this is already... This is not, wow. Totally soft. Right? And you see... How's that feel? It feels really good. You can barely feel anything. Right? So are you using like a light? Very superficial. Yeah. And then here, can you see? It's yeah. Just pulling away. Yeah, it's just... Mm -hmm. I can see how that... Mm -hmm. It's stuck. Yeah, so we always think, oh, we want to get close to it. But when I'm doing... You know, this work moving into it really mm. is this area. Mm. Obviously on the breast tissue, I'm going to be super sensitive. So if we see a lot of tissue moving like this, this mm. would be, we would want to make sure that we're supporting okay. the tissue with our hand. So in case you questioned my suction, you heard the little baby kiss there. <laughs> <laughs> so here... Is congested. Mm -hmm. You can you see that. See you can it, see yeah. it exactly. You can see how the it's tissue, more tuggy. right? The cup just is tugging <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And you feel a difference between where it's congested and where she goes over smoothly. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. See that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> So would you ever leave a cup there, just you know, too sensitive a tissue? See what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Okay. It definitely feels different. Like tighter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But still not painful? No. Like, at all. Hmm. So now we're going to treat Scar. Oh yeah, bye. We're done with six eight. Eight. You did the three? Sorry. How's that feel? And everything good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it when she's over the scar? Can you tell? Yeah, yeah. Probably not, eh? Oh, I don't know. It's other than right there. <laughs> We're doing an acknowledgement.
Interesting that the tissue all around this was fine. Mm -hmm. Right? But when I'm actually on the scar, look at that. But you're not going anywhere, lady. You're going to stay right here. <clears throat> there is a slight difference from the shrouding tissue to the scar tissue. <laughs> I can almost feel like a temperature change. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. A strain of blood to the area. Yeah, hot or cold. It actually feels colder. Sure. Mm -hmm. Older blood. Think about it. Well, yes. Yes. hang on. Collagen mm -hmm. fiber yeah. has how much blood supply? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And right there feels like little tweaks. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So obviously we would continue.